Hello friends, I have a freshly cooked analysis of the game between the world champion Magnus Carlsen versus Yuan Gi from China. From Tata Steel Masters 2020 tournament, the game took place only today, so it's very very fresh and uh, I would like to share this with all of you, my dear YouTube channel subscribers. I will also give you plans for both sides in one of the most popular openings of chess, which is called Sicilian Nidorf. So Yuan Gi plays e4, c5 by Magnus, Knight to f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4. These are all the main moves. Attacks the pawn, defends the pawn, a6, control this b5 square where the knights and bishop can jump. Bishop to e3, main line of the main line, e5. So now we have, we have a very interesting structure and I start teaching my students the openings from the pawn structure and giving them general plans. Then we work out the move order and the execution. So as you can see, black created a chronic weakness on d5. So one of the white's main plans in the next 10 moves is to place the knight on d5 and have enough pieces to always be able to recapture with the piece rather than a pawn. Say I just put the knight here on b3 for the purposes of, it, wouldn't, it would be a little bit more pleasant visually, the knight isn't hanging over there. So we want to avoid something like knight d5, takes and taking with the pawn, we always want to recapture with the pieces. So there is this battle going on for the d5 square, so one of the plans later could also include g2 to g4, g4 to g5, simply expelling black's knight on f6, which is the main defender of the d5 square. Another idea is to play bishop to g5 and take on f6, again in order to win the control over d5 square. And sometimes it's also possible to play f4, f5 later. Bishop is going to be on e6 usually for black to fight for the d5 square. And that will again expel the black's bishop and will have to retreat. Thus black is losing some control over d5. So then the question is, what are black's plan in this position? Well, he would like to break in the center with d6 to d5 and by doing so take over the initiative, right? So not only the square might become a little bit uh, less weak, but also the pawn on d6 is no longer a chronic weakness. He also a lot of the times presses along the c-file so that white couldn't play knight c3 to d5. So there sometimes is rook on c8 and if the queen is misplayed somewhere, knight to d5 can follow into c2. So that's the point that he is pressured. And another lastly plan would be to play b5 to b4, expelling white's knight from c3 before knight c3 to d5 can be played. All right, so knight b3 is the main move here. I can just show you one of the ways that the position could play it out. And if we have the main line of the main line, then we have castles on opposite direction. And thus there is going to be a battle not for d5 square anymore but against each other king. So queen d2, castle short, castle long, and let the battle soon begin. Knight bd7, g4. Who cares about the d5 square? I am hunting the king. And black plays b5, g5, b4, and a long forcing variations could arise and here we have a battle against each other kings. Those are the objects of an attack instead of the positional square in d5. Now, White in the game played knight to f3. So this is a little bit rare, but also playable move. Bishop to e7, bishop to c4. Bishop here again fights for the d5 square as well as look at vulnerable f7 point, good diagonal, castles, castles. And now the main move here is bishop to e6, I believe. At least that's uh, what the people used to play uh, in 10, 15 years ago. And uh, here the main move is obviously bishop to b3. If we just play bishop takes e6 here, f takes e6 and this pawn actually gets black good control over f5 and d5 weaknesses of his. So we have bishop to b3 and I'm just gonna give you a couple of moves of how the pieces are developed. Say knight c6, queen e2. We wanna put the rook on d1 where the rook is gonna be on semi-open file. Knight a5 eating the bishop, rook d1 takes, takes, queen c7, and again, same battle going on for the d5 square. White wants to take the knight here, say rook a c8, again, one of the plants of black is pressuring along the c file, takes, takes, and rook a c1, for example, would be something that uh, the database has seen quite a few times. Instead, we have knight c6. So here, white plays prophylaxis bishop b3, 
knight to a5 bishop to g5 again wants to eliminate the knight in order to get the knight to d5 knight b3 a b3 bishop e6 takes takes knight d5 so as we said he always wants to be able to recapture with the quiz uh, with the piece and here we have almost classical good knight versus bad bishop scenario where knight is gonna most probably dominate the bishop over there even in the case of capture we can actually try to remaneuver later the knight uh, to d5 so we have rook c8 instead by magnus again pressuring along the c file c4 by white now uh, this is a very strong piece on d5 and uh, the knight feels much safer there but c4 gives an option for black in some cases to play b5 and um, the idea is to create some weakened pawns and counterplay on the queen side I have bishop g5 here and he offers to exchange the knight of white for his bad bishop now in case we don't take uh, the bad bishop according to the pawn structure the center might become the active one and uh, perhaps that's one of the reasons why white decided to take and enter this forcing line takes queen d3 now we have bishop to d5 queen to d5 um, if we play e takes d5 probably a5 could follow with counterplay for black so queen d5 again one of the main ideas of whites to be able to recapture with the piece rook to c6 over protecting the chronic weakness of his rook fd1 playing against chronic weakness of blacks this the pawn on d6 rook c8 rook d3 queen e7 g3 all the moves make sense so prophylactic moves to not gonna get into any back rank tactics in the future rook a d1 queen c7 and now black's main idea is to as i said to play for b5 break so i say rook c3 magnus did play king g7 but b5 leads to probably forcing equalizing lines like say takes on b5 takes on c3 takes on c3 a b5 now if takes on b5 probably we just take on c3 and after here uh black could already start threatening and maybe there is queen e1 and just winning the pawn back right immediately or maybe queen f3 followed by rook c1 could follow so instead probably white in this line just takes the pawn on d6 and we have takes 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 everything is taken away and uh, would equal end game for both sides so b5 wasn't played though perhaps a little bit more safe king g7 king g2 no need to calculate here for black at all rook e8 and the player just maneuvered a little bit h5 h4 and in this position they agreed to a draw so quite quite an, an easy draw i would say for magnus uh, i believe that he has analyzed these positions quite well and uh, he knew all the plans of his and uh, i would say with the black pieces at the, such a high tournament even for a world champion draw with the black pieces is a pleasant result so i hope you enjoyed this video you learned a few or, or two uh, uh, one thing or two in the neither of defense of the sicilian and if you did do please subscribe to my channel you could also hire me as your personal chess coach online my contacts are on the bottom right and stay healthy my friends continue loving the game and play chess